I encourage you this week to, to go home and read this psalm, Psalm 61, as we'll be looking at it again next week. So it's a nice way to, uh, to keep that in your minds as we, as we go through this for two weeks together. Lead me to the rock. I'm going to read verse 1 and verse 2 again. Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Um, I don't know if I'm the only one in here, but I will admit that I am a avid yard sailor. I... Uh, I don't, I don't know what it is. I just, I think to myself, no, I'm not going to go out this Saturday. <laughs> and then I go out that Saturday. Like, I just enjoy going around and seeing what's what. And then you come home and, you know, you find some good things. And then some things you get in trouble for. And then other things you get the old eye roll. Like, you know, but it was 25 cents. How can I pass it up? <laughs> Um, but I do enjoy that. Uh, it's it's a, a, lot of, a lot of fun to just do it. I just like to do it. Uh, one of the things I found at a yard sale was a painting. And it's a pretty big painting. Uh, probably going to say, probably that big, that wide, that tall. And it, it's in a frame. And uh, it is a, a picture of a... The, the, like the ocean, and then there's rocks, and then it has on top the scripture, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And so I saw this painting. I didn't know where I was going to put it, but I couldn't leave it there. It didn't matter. I knew it wasn't going to go in the house necessarily, because, you know, you're not exactly, as a husband, probably going to bring home this giant painting and say, here, dear, <laughs> let's just hang this up instead of all the things you've put up doesn't work that way I figured out uh, yeah yeah uh, so I took this painting and I didn't even I didn't even think to put it in the house because I didn't really necessarily want it there where I put it was somewhere that I would enjoy and that I would see out in my shop and so I have a shop where I have some woodworking tools and other tools and different things and that's where I go sometimes to just, if, if you're a guy and you have a little shop and you know it's a little spot you can go that becomes kind of its own sanctuary. And there are times I have gone out in my shop, as the scripture says, when my heart is overwhelmed. And I have a rocking chair that I bought at a yard sale. <laughs> and Natalie has a rocking chair right beside mine, by the way, which was also part of the sale. <laughs> she loves being out there. Danielle don't get it, but Natalie loves it. <laughs> and I have gone out there and sat in that chair and looked at that painting. And, and I have just thought about the words that are on that painting. Many, many, many times. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And in fact, I have, I have done even at times, and it, don't, don't think I'm getting all weird here, I'm not. I have practiced some things that I learned at a prayer retreat. And these words sound kind of funny. One is called Lectio Divina which means divine reading, and the other is called visio divina, which is like looking at something and being inspired by that. It's obviously like Latin, that's where they come from, these things. There are old practices that people would do. Lectio divina means you're going to look at each word individually and meditate upon each word by themselves. You're not gonna rush, you're not gonna just read for information, but you're going to read to be inspired. And so I have sat there and looked at each word on this painting and thought about each one. And I do this with other passages of Scripture too. For example, the Lord is my shepherd. 
That's a great one to go home and sit down and pull out each individual word and then read it over and over and put the emphasis on that word. It's, it's a wonderful way to meditate upon the scriptures. And I've sat there and looked at each word and then sometimes I've gone out and just looked at the painting. I don't know who made the painting. There's like a little signature on the bottom and it was bought locally. But that painting has, as other things have, I mean, I try to find inspiration from a lot of things, but it has been a true blessing for me to have that painting hanging up in my shop. So I'm thankful to whoever painted it. I'm thankful that it has found its way to me. And this morning, I'd like to kind of do a very quick version of this with you on this sentence. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That's where we're going to focus today. And so a way to do this would be that we pull out every single word. And so we start with the word lead. And again, when you do this, you see how the writers are so specific under the inspiration of God that they give us these words. That first word, lead is so important because how great is our need to be led I think I think that's the that's like the first and greatest thing I think that in the Christian faith or just as a as a creation of God's when the creation finally gets to the spot where they realize, I can't lead myself. That's the starting point. <laughs> That's when now you can really get something done. I remember in my own faith, I, I was came to faith when I was about nine, and you know, you're working your way through and you have different things along your way, different challenges and different things, and you didn't understand all of it. And I still don't have all the answers for everything. But I do know that there was a specific time in my faith where I basically had to sit down and almost lay down my sword, if you will, and stop fighting so hard and realize, I can't lead myself. And it was almost there that I felt, I felt like, it was like, yes, I was a Christian, but I feel like that realization really made me start to walk the path and follow the footsteps of Christ and willingly put myself under his leadership. Because isn't that the battle? Isn't that the war continuously? That we try to lead ourselves. I know what God says. But. Is that not the first. What we call the original sin. In the garden. We know what God said. But we want to lead ourselves. Isn't that the sin. Of Lucifer. In the presence of God. I know what God has said I'm to do. But. Until. We learn. That we cannot. Lead. ourselves, There's always going to be. A major problem. A major war. And I would even say, even to those who have said, yes, I understand, I, I can't. Even then, still there's times when that desire to lead myself tries to come forward. So when the psalmist says, lead, <laughs> boy, if we woke up every day with a one-word prayer and we opened our eyes and we were looking to God and said, 
lead. What a difference it would make. Now, the next word is critical too. Me. That's the other thing I figured out about the Christian faith, is that it wasn't the faith of my parents. It had to be personal to me. And every single person has to accept that for themselves. That it is for you. It is personal to you. This is about you surrendering to God. Not about husband or wife, sister, brother, no, nobody else. Nobody else. This is you and God. And so we say, lead me. The next word, two. And I'm going to speed up a little bit because next week we're going to go into this a little further. Lead me to. That means that there is a place to be led. It's not just we're randomly walking around, don't know where we're going. Lead me to. There's a specific place. We're going somewhere. And in this case, it's not necessarily a place, even though he's saying the word, the rock, we know that it is a person that we are being led to. Lead me to the. That word is key, the. Not a, not one of, not, not that one, maybe that one, that one. There's only one. Lead me to the. The one. There is only one. There's only one name by which you can be saved. And that is Jesus. There is only one rock. There is only one cornerstone. There is only the, the one. It's not, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just wander around and I might end up somewhere. He's being very specific. Lead me to the rock. And how awesome does that sound? I don't know if you were following the story of the seven fishermen in Newfoundland who were recently rescued after about 48 hours at sea with no communication. And they were picked up and, and, and all seven of them survived. It's a miraculous story. And I couldn't help but think to myself how, how relieved they must have been when their feet touched on ground. Oddly enough, Newfoundland is nicknamed the rock because it is so rocky and so rugged. But can you imagine how they felt? They must have just been thinking and praying, get us back to that ground. How great is it for us as Christians that we have a sure foundation. We have a place to put our feet that is stable. We have a rock to stand upon. We do not have to be adrift. We do not have to be lost. We do not have to get up in the day and wander around aimlessly trying to lead ourselves. But we can be led to a place every day that is sure and stable and forever. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I have the next two words going together. That is... Again, very important to stop and think. And you can stop and think about all, all these words for quite a while. That is. Not that was. Not that might be. Not that I hope is there. That is there. It is. If something is, it is. When is it? It is. <laughs> In every day, it is. He is. That is. Higher. What does that word higher tell us? Bigger. Stronger. Wiser. More capable. Better in every way. His thoughts are not ours. His ways are not ours. Higher. He is higher than us. And again, that, that to us may sound, well, yeah. But how many are out there living 
in a way that again, that they think that their way is higher than God's way. They think their thoughts are higher than God's thoughts. And again, such it is the struggle in our sinful nature until we are perfected in eternity that we will struggle with that. That we say, I know what the Word of God says, but I think this. I know what it says to do, but I'd like to do this. But it's when we say, God, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. When we wake up every day and willingly put ourselves under the authority of the Word of God, under the authority of the Godhead of heaven, and when we as the creation look up at the Creator and say, lead me, you're higher than I, you know better than I, you're more stable than I. And I mean, it almost sounds silly when we actually think about it, us in comparison to God. Like, who do we think that we actually are that we would even think, oh God, you know better than me. Well, of course he knows better than you. Of course he knows better than me. <laughs> it almost sounds silly. Well, I guess I'll do it God's way, I suppose. Isn't it weird? But... Loved ones, in order to live in peace, in order to live with rest, in order to live and work and enjoy life from a place that you're not striving, you cannot rely on your own strength. I've mentioned before, and I'll close with this, that every year on Natalie's birthday, I write her a letter and things that I want her to know. If anything were to happen to me, that she would have some really important words from her dad. And I do it once a year because I really work hard at trying to kind of compact it. It's going to be, it's going to be, I feel... I hope it is anyway, going to be uh, meaningful for her to have these. Right now she has three. I hope I get to write a whole bunch. I don't know how many I'll get to write, but I hope I get to write a whole bunch of them. And there's one of those letters where I say to her, Natalie, I have to lead you to the rock. My greatest job is to lead you to here as your dad, as best as I can. I have to bring her there. It's okay. Let me close it down. We're just wiping up some water. It's okay. We're going to focus. My job as a dad is to try to lead her as I follow Christ to that place. But ultimately, she has to make that choice. Above every hope I have for her, above every dream that I have for her, is that she would put her feet on the rock. Because I explained to her, I don't stand because I stand. Danielle doesn't stand because she stands. Our marriage doesn't stand because we stand. We stand because he stands. And isn't that the story of our lives as Christians? That we can talk to people and they say, I go through this, I'm going through this, I'm going through this, and we can say, I'm going through all the same things. Well, how do you stand? How do you deal with it? 
I do because he stands. Let us place our feet willingly and firmly upon the rock. Let us be led to that place. Let us start each day with our heart in that posture and say, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And from that point, I truly believe the Holy Spirit will help us through our day, through our time, to do the things that we want to do, to be who we want to be, to come to the full stature of who we are to be in Christ. But it starts with a humility that the creation recognizes the Creator and realizes our true and utter dependence upon Him. That in and of ourselves we cannot stand. But standing upon Him, we stand forever.